This video was brought to you by Brilliant. On Sunday, Greece held parliamentary elections that delivered a strong result for the incumbent government. But the country will almost certainly head to the polls yet again in July for another election. So in this video, we're going to run through the results of the most recent election, what they mean, and why Greece is set for its second election in just two months. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Just briefly before we get into the results, there's something worth knowing about the electoral system in Greece. That's because this election is the first under a new system of simple proportionality, which basically makes it harder for any individual party to win an outright majority. In other words, 151 or more seats in the 300-seat parliament. We'll come back to this later, but on to the results. The big winner of the night was the New Democracy Party. That's the ruling Conservative Party led by Kyriakou Mitsotakis, who's been Prime Minister since coming into power at the last election in 2019. Now, this time round, New Democracy received an impressive 40.8% of the vote, translating to 146 seats, just five short of a majority. And that 40% is nearly a point higher than their 2019 result, and a couple of points higher than polling had suggested they might receive. In a distant second place was the left-wing Syriza, whose leader previously served as Prime Minister from 2015 to 2019. Despite that, they massively underperformed their polling and received just over 20% of the vote, roughly 71 seats, which is more than 11 percentage points lower than their 2019 result and comes in at half of what New Democracy received. Then in third place was the centre-left PASOK party, with 11.5% of the vote and 41 seats, nearly double the number of seats they won in 2019 and a nearly 3.5 point improvement in terms of vote share. Now, PASOK used to be one of the two main political parties in Greece. That was up until 2012 when it collapsed and was replaced by Syriza as the main political force on the left. Then in fourth place were the Communist Party, who gained nearly two percentage points compared to 2019 and received roughly 7% of the vote, which translates to 26 seats. Then in fifth were the right-wing to far-right Greek solution, whose 4.5% gives them 16 seats. Now, these are far from being Greece's only political parties. In fact, some three dozen took part in the election, but these are just the ones who received more than the 3% required to get any parliamentary seats. Now, one notable party who fell below this threshold and therefore lost all of their six seats is Mire 25, a left-wing party led by the former finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis. One other notable story from the election is the banning of the extreme right Greeks party, who has links to the illegal neo-Nazi Golden Dawn. Now, the party had been polling at just above the three percentage point threshold before they were barred from taking part in the election. So they obviously got no seats. Anyway, those are the results coming out of the election. But there are a few things to look at more closely here. Firstly, New Democracy's remarkable outcome. Despite falling short of a majority, it's only the second time in nearly 50 years that a ruling party in Greece has increased their vote share at an election, and it's arguably the best electoral performance for an incumbent government since Greece's transition to democracy in 1974. And the Prime Minister's vote of confidence from the public is even more impressive when you consider the things that damaged his government ahead of the election. For example, the government was embroiled in a wiretapping scandal dubbed the Greek Watergate that involved the National Intelligence Service tapping into the phones of all sorts of people, including opposition politicians and even the PASOK party's leader. Then, in late February of this year, a train collision killed 57 people and sparked public outrage over safety failings and the government's failure to modernise the country's rail systems. Now, Syriza's campaign focused a lot on these two things, as well as the cost of living crisis currently hitting the country, despite a robust economic recovery. 
But despite this, Syriza still didn't perform well, and their disastrous result raises doubts about Alexis Tsipras's future as the party's leader, a post which he's held since 2009. In fact, he didn't even try and sugarcoat the results, instead describing them as exceptionally negative, adding that the party needed to immediately assess and make the necessary changes. Regardless, with the ruling New Democracy Party way out in front, but without a majority, one might expect Misakis to begin negotiating to try and form a coalition, perhaps some sort of grand coalition with PASOK. However, the deep divisions between Greek political parties means that while a coalition is an option, it seems very unlikely. So instead, it seems that Prime Minister Mitsakis is gunning for a fresh election. Now, remember when we said that Sunday's election was the first under the new electoral system? Well, it wasn't just the first, it was also the last. The next election, which would likely be held in July, will be under the old system of reinforced proportionality. Now, this reinforced proportionality system makes it a whole lot easier for the winning party to secure a majority of parliamentary votes by allocating a bonus of up to 50 seats to the party that wins the most votes. Now, the backstory to electoral reform is slightly confusing, but it basically goes like this. In 2016, a year after Syriza came into power, they scrapped the old system, which awarded the majority bonus to the winning party. Now, this change wasn't able to come into force before the next election in 2019, but would take effect at the following election in 2023, the one this video is about. However, in 2020, the New Democracy government passed a law to revert back to the old system. Now, this change also wouldn't take place before the next election, again, the one this video is about, but it would come into force at the one after that. That's the one they could hold as soon as July. Ultimately then, this resulted in a slightly strange situation where an electoral law passed in 2016 only to be applied at a single election, this one in 2023. So perhaps it's unsurprising that Mitsakis and New Democracy are keen on holding another election in just a couple of months, as under the reverted system, they're very likely to be rewarded an outright majority, assuming that voting patterns are broadly the same. This result also means that third place PASOK is likely enthusiastic about another election too, as Syriza's significant fall in vote share and their rise, albeit only slight, gives them the momentum to pick up even more support from left of centre voters before the next election. However, even if he does decide to call another election, Mitsakis does still have some things to worry about before them. The population is still dealing with a cost of living crisis, despite a good economic recovery more generally. Mitsakis also faces questions over the spyware scandal, accusations of illegal pushbacks of asylum seekers, and there's still persisting anger over the Tempe train crash. Nonetheless, assuming no dramatic developments over the next month or so, he looks set to secure another four terms at the next election, which could potentially be as soon as July. Ultimately, this story, which combines politics, elections, and the economy, really shows us what an unstable world we live in right now, especially economically. So it would be great if politicians were better at, well, maths and decision making. Fortunately, they could do that easily if they signed up to Brilliant, the STEM learning platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision making, a skill severely lacking at the moment. It doesn't take long to learn either. These complex topics are broken down into accessible chunks designed around your busy schedule. That means that by spending just a few minutes each and every day, you can accumulate new knowledge over time in an actually fun way. And as time goes on, you'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning. Because this isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects, and ensuring that you actually understand what's going on. So whether you want to brush up on your basic math skills, improve your employment prospects by learning about future technologies, or just have fun with coding, you can check out everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days just by clicking the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off 
brilliant annual premium subscription. 